An Easter cobblestone hunt in France was the 120th edition of Paris-Roubaix. The hell of the north beginning on the cobbles of Compiègne on Place General de Gaulle, where somebody was hoping to start on the cobbles and finish on the podium. The new tech was on show. 175 cobble gobblers lined up from 25 different teams. Some more favourites than others. Everybody, though, daring to dream. A mid-morning start and the 120th edition of a Sunday in hell was 256.6 kilometres long, heading to Troisville, the gates to hell, 96 kilometres on normal roads before they got there. Once on the cobbles, three headline moments in the race, Arenberg and its trench, mont pavel and Carrefour de l'Arbre before one and a half laps of the velodrome to finish things off on the old concrete track. Each cobblestone sector, as always, rated from one to five stars, one being the easiest, although none are easy, five being the most difficult. A hellish undertaking with just under 55 k's of cobbles to take on. And it took a long time before any breakaway was formed. In fact, just over 10 kilometers before we got to the first sector of cobbles. A minute and a half was roughly the highest gap that the breakaway had. Derek G, Sjord Box, Yuri Holman and Jonas Koch were there as the crashes carried on behind and Peter Sagan crashed out for the second week running. Two final appearances in cobbled monuments, two DNFs and trips to the hospital. With 102 kilometers to go, the real party started. Jumbo Visma anticipating just about everybody. Mathieu von Apol was wise to it, as was Stefan Kung. John Degenkolb in there as well as Fanart and Laporte attacked going into the famous Arenberg Trench. There were problems and heartbreak for Derek G. On debut, he'd made it up there. He suffered a mechanical and would not be seen again. In the meantime, crashes behind for the defending champion, Dylan van Bala. And Kispa Askren, former winner of the Ronde van Vlaanderen, would also go out. Mars Pedersen would set off in support. And then Christophe Laporte would suffer a mechanical. Valscheid would get there, Gannar as well, and suddenly 13 riders were on their way to the front of the race. Laporte would try and work to get back on. The 13 at the front would gradually be whittled down. Jonas Koch and Sjord Box losing contact. Nata Verhoydonk would restart the chase. He'd try and get back with Florian Vermeersch, a former second place finisher, and Laporte. Mathieu von der Poel would attack, attack, and continue to attack. 50 k's to go when he launched this move. Bart van Aert was quick across, and the rest would soon follow. But to the front he'd go again. Monson Pevel this time. Max Valscheid struggling to hold on. And even off the end of the big sector of cobbles, the five-star one, Van der Poel would once more try to be aggressive. Next time they came to five stars, it would be Carrefour de l'Arbre, the final big test before the velodrome itself. A coming together, ding called down, hearts broken. The 2015 winner looking for cobblestone number two down and out for the win. He'd be back on his bike as Wat van Aert and Mathieu van der Poel were at the front of the race. But with 15 and a half kilometers remaining, Van Aert would be losing the wheel. He'd also be losing the air in his back tyre. A puncture on Carrefour de l'Arbre, effectively ending his chances of winning the race and seeing Van der Poel ride away solo. Van der Poel was out in the front and tried to stay there. He'd be taking risks though. Van Aert set off in search of his big rival. But that big rival was able to keep it upright even though the risks were being taken. On the way to the velodrome, there was a final attempt to try and shake Jasper Philips up. And in that velodrome, at the end of what was to be the fastest ever Paris-Roubaix, Mathieu van der Poel arrived alone. He finally realized what he'd done. And becoming just the fourth rider in history to win Paris-Roubaix 
and Milano San Remo in the same season. Fonopol victorious. And it will be a first 1-2 for a team in Paris-Roubaix for 22 long years. Not since the days of Domo Farm Fritz had that occurred. But Alpacine de Koenig, or Alpacine Elegant as they were known on the day, put in an aggressive performance that saw Phillips have finished second with Wat van Aert denied any sort of luck, having to settle for third place. Big celebrations for Fonderpool. First in San Remo, second in Deronda, first again in Roubaix. His third different monument, fourth in total. He's the man with the best percentage of top 10 finishes of any rider who has ever ridden a monument. It's a win though here. Phillips is second, for not third, with Pedersen and Kung in the top five. Ganna and Degenkolb with a heartbreaking seventh as Mathieu von der Poel became the second Dutchman in as many seasons to lift the famous cobblestone in the old Roubaix velodrome. The cobbled classics come to an end, but there's plenty more bike riding to come on the home of cycling. Join us as we look ahead to the Giro d'Italia. Before that, Liege, Baston Liege. And it's all on Discovery Plus and GCN Plus.